Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got another gun gripe episode for you and this one's special because oh. it's here at our <laughs> ancestral home of Moss Pawn and Gun here in Jonesboro, mm -hmm. Georgia. <clears throat> many, many, many a gun gripe have been filmed behind this very counter and we're proud to be back here for a while. Is it hallowed ground? Yes, hallowed, hallowed ground <laughs> that we stand on here. This spot. Okay? Hollow, hollow ground? <laughs> yeah, that's, no, it's not hollow, it's hallowed. Oh, hallowed. Distinct difference, okay. <laughs> but today we've got a doozy of a gun gripe and what more perfect place to do it than here, okay? And we're gonna be talking about Mark Levine's comments about how to commit mass murder. This guy is really, really off his rockers, right? <laughs> and he's the guy that introduced the assault weapons ban in Virginia. Mm -hmm. He's obviously a you know, congressman up there in Virginia. And the dude is definitely drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> this document, like if you read through this, this statement he put out, <laughs> He puts out not only all kinds of like factually incorrect things, infactual things, mm. he also literally lays it out in a way that completely polarizes all gun owners and makes us sound like we're all crazy. Mm. And He'll he really real makes quick. this all about, oh, the left is going to save you and all of this. It, it's, you need to go read it. Now, we're not going to so, read the whole thing because it, 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 it's mind-numbing, the is statement like, that he put out. This is a, a, like a, a manifesto-type deal that he actually it put is. on his website. I mean, this, this was linked to, I mean, I found this on his website. Um, but it, it's, it's ridiculous. All right, so he... And it sounds like it's written by a 10-year-old. All right, so he says, if only Republican elected officials actually put the needs of victims ahead of the desires of criminals, terrorists, and the violently insane. So he's lumping common law-abiding gun owners in with criminals, okay? Like most anti-gunners do. They want to lump us all into one big basket. That way they can just put us over in the corner and say, those are bad people. The guns that they use are bad. They're not for hunting. Blah, 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 blah. Ain't That's, got nothing to do with hunting. All right. So, uh, he, he compares the AR to uh, a military weapon originally used by the Nazis. I guess he's referring to the Sturmgewehr. You know, the first modern actual assault rifle, okay? That is an actual assault rifle. And only you know? because that's what it's called. Sturmgewehr literally translates to storm rifle, okay? So it was just called that as like a mm. nickname, right? The official designation, mm -hmm. because they didn't want Hitler to find out about it, they called it the MP44 early on. And the reason they did that is because Hitler didn't like the idea of the Sturmgewehr. He liked the MP4, MP40, all right? So MP, machine pistol, right? So they designated it the MP44 mm -hmm. in order to get around Hitler mm -hmm. during the war. They wanted th him to think, oh, well, it's just another machine pistol. All right, no big deal. And they mm -hmm. did that to kind of hide it from him so they could feel the Sturmgewehr. Mm -hmm. So the Sturmgewehr is not an AR-15, all right? Two very, very different yeah. things. So, I mean... That's just a lie. It's just... It's, in, it's not correct information. It's wrong. <laughs> oh, it's just, not correct. Just wait. There's more factually incorrect things throughout this text. And we're not going to read the entire thing, but just a, a few little points. All right. The AR-15, the weapon of choice for mass murderers. Okay, well, let alone all the people that use ARs on a regular basis to defend themselves, their homes, and their properties, and their families. Oh. I mean... So you mean the mass murderers that protect you, all right, in, in those houses that you're in, and, and when you're in a government building and all the guards are armed with AR-15s, oh, and you mean the AR-15s you give the military, the police... Guards, come on. No, those aren't the, those aren't these AR-15s. He's oh, talking oh, about other these AR aren't 15s. the AR-15s you're looking for, right? Is that what is that how that ends up working out? Yeah. So, <coughs> you do not want to hunt animals. The weapon isn't designed for that. You want to hunt people. All right. Um, let's see. That's murder, an ignorant statement. Murder is not enough for you. You're a sadist. You want to kill as many people as possible. Uh, there's one thing in here. Let's see. Oh, you want to hurt people badly, not to disable an attacker the way the police do. What does that even mean? You mean not like the police shoot people <laughs> and kill them? I mean, look. Let's see. Making, making this about, oh, the police will always protect you. Mm -hmm. Look, there are a lot of different schools of thought when it comes to how mm -hmm. the police handle situations, what the police do, the amount of training that they get, everything like that. But we have to remember, police are people just like anybody else. They, they go home to their families. Mm -hmm. their, their goal is to go home at the end of the day, right? Okay, we get that. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to obtain self-preservation. 
And I think that people tend to put this thing into the wrong wheelhouse when it comes to why gun owners are so into guns, right? Like when you, you come across somebody and you say, oh, this guy's a gun nut because mm -hmm. he owns more. Not only one or 15 he owns two or three or four or five or however many. Because people that love guns are also in love with the things that guns bring them. And you know what guns bring people? You know what they bring to the table? They bring to the table the preservation of life, liberty, and allowing me to pursue what makes me happy and for me to live my life the way I want. So yeah, it's kind of a big deal for me to be able to protect that because at that point, the government and all these cronies and people like Levine, they don't have to reason with you if you're disarmed. They can just send their mm -hmm. cronies in to do whatever they want and there's nothing you can do about it because you're disarmed. Mm -hmm. But in the situation where I'm armed, I have to be reasoned with. If I'm a 110 pound little old you know, girl or whatever with four kids, and some Brutus knocks in the door, wants to knock my, my skull in and do no telling what things. else, right? If I've got a 12-gauge shotgun on the other end of the uh, uh, door, or if i got an AR-15, I can pump <clears> on <throat> Brutus full of lead, and guess what? It don't, it don't matter what he wants to do mm -hmm. because he's got to get to that AR-15 first. Mm -hmm. Guns are the great equalizer, and the AR-15 is a super, super, super common rifle. These things are everywhere. Mm -hmm. And they are not used in crimes. Not even, and I, you have a greater chance of being killed with a hammer or a baseball bat mm. or gravity or water um, than you do with this rifle. Rifles as a whole are used in less than like a few tenths of 1% of crime. Okay? And then when you talk about an AR 15 itself, it's used in a minuscule amount below that. You stand a greater chance of choking on the food you're eating. So, than you do being killed by this rifle. This is all emotional rhetoric, like we always talk about. It is not based on the facts. And um, there's a few other points I want to make in this here, like this this letter, okay? Oh now, this is a little bit old. This was dated, I think, in like 2018, okay? So he put this out a while back, and we're just now kind of actually uh, uh, distributing it. Just not distributing it, but um, Listen to me, I can't even think of the word. Uh, we're just now discovering it. Listen to me, God, my redneck brain is imploding I right now. I think that my brain is worse off after having read it and discovered Ugh. it. I saw right. this over on Tim's <laughs> mm -hmm. Instagram uh, page, like, a military arms channel. I saw it and I was like, what mm -hmm. is this? And I clicked <clears> it and I read it and I instantly, like whatever your IQ is, okay, say your IQ is right here and you read this, your IQ is gonna, you're gonna lose a few points. You're gonna go need to read some Shakespeare or, or something to get those, the, if, the brain activity back up to recover the brain cells this is gonna uh, kill when you read what it. If so your IQ just was, be prepared for that. What if your IQ was in the negative? Well, all right, so it ain't gonna hurt you. You can't get no dumber. All right, listen. I guess, uh, you know. All right, illegal, into, in, illegal until 2004, 1.5 million of these, meaning assault rifles have been sold since the national GOP legalized them by removing the assault rifle ban. You mean the 1994 crime bill that sunsetted in 2004 that did absolutely nothing to curb criminal activity and did not change the basic function of this device. And out of that 1.5 million, if that's even the correct term, he's probably off on that just like the rest of the facts in this document, but out of that 1.5 million, how many of them were actually used in crimes? The data is just does not support their claims. Not in a long shot. All right, the crime bill when it lapsed and it sun sunsetted, they they researched all the data and they found you know what this di didn't really affect crime at all. Like there mm -hmm. was no negative or positive from it. It was just everything was the same because mm -hmm. the gun was the same, right? And the thing is, these guns are out there now. So mm -hmm. when you have all that data in place, I mean, how long has the AR-15 been an extremely prevalent rifle, right? <clears> since <throat> at least the 80s. All right. Right? Early 80s <clears throat> and even before that. Like, mm -hmm. those things were just out there, right? And there's millions upon millions of these guns in private hands. And I want to mention something that's really important in this video before he continues. Get fired continue. up! No, like, it's important. You look at the guys at Palmetto State Armory and what they're doing, right? You know, they sell a four or $500 AR, right? But mm -hmm. a lot of people think, oh, well, how good can a four or $500 AR be? You're really missing the point. 
they're really not a bad gun for the money and it's a great entry level gun. Mm -hmm. But what does that do for four or five hundred bucks? It makes the AR-15 obtainable mm -hmm. for average people that, you know, if maybe if that's all they can afford, they can get into a baseline mm -hmm. AR to protect themselves. And what is PSA mm -hmm. doing? They're getting more ARs in people's hands so that when these mm -hmm. politicians run their dang mouth about stuff that they're not qualified to discuss because they have no idea what they're talking about, mm -hmm. it completely stonewalls the conversation because they're like, okay, how many millions of these dang things are out there? And they're just not used in crimes. Mm -hmm. The data is just not supportive of what they want you to believe. And that's what's so scary mm -hmm. about this. I know I'm long-winded, no, but you're good. it's important. That's what's so scary <laughs> about this is that they want to distort the facts and they want to lie to people and they want to create uh, you know, a narrative that exists only in their minds mm -hmm. and only to the people that they want to vote for them. And they don't care if that narrative is based on facts or if it's based on mm -hmm. evidence mm -hmm. or if it's based on the real world that we live in. They are living in a fantasy world that does not involve you and they don't care about you. They want your vote. That's it. Mm -hmm. But it has nothing to do with reality, decency, any of that. It's just about a cult of personality. And this Levine guy takes me as like an extreme narcissist, someone who feels so strongly about his point, even though you're wrong, right? What does a narcissist do when they're wrong? They go, oh, they can't be wrong. Oh, the, the sky's blue. The sky's not blue. Doesn't matter. And when they're a narcissist, <laughs> They will lie over and over and over and over. Mm -hmm. and, they will, and they will tell that lie until they think it becomes a truth to mm -hmm. you. And that's all they care about. This mm -hmm. guy was, was willing to lie to you over and over and over again until you start believing mm -hmm. it. Indeed. Uh, one one Sorry. point. I just had to get that out. <laughs> Take a breath. <laughs> all right, I'm going to relax. Right. So one, one point about the rifle, too. Okay, so PSA, selling these guns. You got to think, you can get in an AR, which is a lot more gun than a Glock, okay? Not to say that it's not a good gun, Glock's okay? But a good gun. An AR is a lot more gun for the money than a Glock is when it comes to, like, home defense. I mean, it's, it's the right tool for the job. And that brings me to this point. All right, so he said, Mark Levine says, What if you're a Nazi or an Al Qaeda terrorist? What if you're a mentally disturbed younger who has vowed to commit mass murder? What if you have a history of torturing animals or domestic violence or gang activity? What if you've been convicted of shooting innocent people and you out are on parole? Well, guess what? I want the tools necessary at my disposal to counter those threats to myself, my family, and my community. All right. Also, and those people are still going to get the guns regardless of yep. what the laws are. Now this is and even with those laws, right? Even <laughs> all right, the gun laws that are already on the books. All right, how many? There's <coughs> twenty thousand federal laws just related to guns. More than and that I, now, and more than that now, but over twenty thousand <laughs> laws related to <coughs> firearms as, at all these levels, right? And Criminals still get guns because they're going to buy things on the black market. Civilians, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, wh whatever way you go through to get whatever mm -hmm. guns you have, it doesn't change the fact that those guns are there. Mm -hmm. Criminals have guns. We have guns. The government has guns. Okay, fine. All of that being what it is, the crime rate is still what the crime rate is. Mm -hmm. Okay, it doesn't matter even if, if the criminals went and bought every AR there was, and drilled out that third hole, and put machine gun parts in them and all that, it still wouldn't change the fact that it's not used in crimes. Crime data is what crime data is. So by lumping gun owners into that type of scenario, you're really punching people in the face, and it's a low blow. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not a face punch. It's a cross punch because it's a low blow because you're, say you're saying that all people that own guns are either criminals or are waiting to be a criminal or mm -hmm. going to be a criminal and that's just not freaking true pre-crime pre-crime mm -hmm. it doesn't exist all right so ne the next part Sorry. here all right you're all right the gop in virginia has steadfastly refused to enact or lately even consider bills to punish good guys who sell such dangerous weapons to the bad guys the gop doesn't want a basic background check already used in gun stores to apply to or apply to gun sales to criminals terrorists and the violently insane in the streets all right number one all right if you go into a gun shop, you have to fill out a 4473, okay? You have to submit to a background check unless you already have a carry permit, all right? Whatever the case is, you don't walk out of that store without having some sort of background check, all right? If you want to buy a gun illegally, you're going to get it by whatever means necessary, okay? There are plenty of guns in the so-called street, you know, that criminals will go outside of the normal channels to buy, okay? Now, what he's referring to is the whole uh, gun show loophole 
and you know private sales, background checks, that sort of thing, the, the backdoor gun registration, all right, the whole nine yards. But so if you think a background checks or background checks are unreasonable and you can deal with the little children being massacred like this on a regular basis, you'll want to support the NRA and the GOP. But if you want this madness, or if you think this madness needs to stop, the only way out is to elect Democrats. That is completely laughable. All right, so going back to a point we've made in several other videos, all right, you want to stop massacres, okay, at schools, public places, gun-free zones. Guess what? Abolish gun-free zones. Abolish them. Get them out of here, okay? When you have law-abiding people who abide by the law and you can't bring a gun to a certain place, well, what are they going to do? Typically, people are going to leave their guns at home. They're going to leave their guns in their car. They're not going to take them in because they don't want to break the law. They don't want to become a criminal. But guess what? People who are intent on criminal behavior will ignore those laws. They're going to go to these soft targets. That's exactly what they are. They're places where they know there's not going to be a lot of resistance to what they want to do because no one else is going to have a gun there. And yep. the cops are minutes away. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, when, what when an you, idiot. When you criminalize decency and when you criminalize common sense, yeah. then common sense goes out the window. Then there is no common sense right then it becomes less about what is right and real in the real world that we live within and more about the fantasy world that you think you'd live within mm -hmm. it just doesn't work that way just because that's the fantasy world he lives in and thinks we all live in doesn't make it reality right and it's just simply not true like i said he probably doesn't even know which end of the gun the bullet comes out of he has no business even commenting on this type of stuff, he has no idea what well, he's this talking is the about. Same, it look, completely removes any shred of validity he <clears throat> ever hoped to have. This is the it same makes kind him of sound crap. Like a clown. This is the same kind of crap you always hear from these anti-gun liberals, Democrats, whatever you want to call them. Okay, you know, 50, 40, 30 clips in a magazine of ghost guns. They have no idea what they're talking about. They want to sound smart and articulate, but they just simply lack the cognitive ability to do so. And they want their base, who, if they vote for them, probably typically follow that same mantra, okay? So I hate to say that, but if you are a mindless slave, you vote for these people, okay? They want to tell you that they're going to protect you. They want to tell you that, uh, you know, if you vote for me, everything will be fine. You'll be safe. But then guess what? You're not safe. You're just stripped of your rights. And when they strip you of one right, they're going to strip you of more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it works. It's ultimate, the ultimate goal is always power. And this guy wants power over you. He wants you to be a mindless slave, defenseless, and having to rely on the state for everything, including yep. your protection. And you notice that they never say, oh, well, we're going to... You, you notice with these assault weapons bans and all of these bills that they write related to firearms technology and things like that, you always notice there's law enforcement exemption. You know what I mean? Oh, well, if you're military law enforcement, we're going to exempt you from this. <laughs> of course. Of course they are. So well, see, <laughs> it's not about the gun being a problem because it's a tool that can be in whatever hands and for whatever purpose. <clears throat> and the fact that it's not even used for the purposes well, <laughs> they say it is in the first place, <coughs> it's the fact that they... <laughs> It's the fact that they want to have all the guns and they don't want you to have them. All right. So remember, anybody that would disarm you, that's probably not your friend. Remember in New York when they passed the SAFE Act and they forgot to exempt law enforcement, so law enforcement got rolled in there with common everyday citizens who were now Yeah, criminals. breaking the law by carrying their gun to you work know, every day. <laughs> the police call, they're like, uh, hey, uh, aren't we exempt from this law? Uh, we're usually exempt. Uh, we're going to turn our guns into or arrest ourselves? I yeah. mean, this is the idiocy that you're dealing with. I mean, anyways, I'm done. Mark, Mark Levine has no more place talking about firearms technology or about policy related to firearms than I have talking about policy related rocket ships. It'd Quantum be like physics. me trying to explain how a rocket booster works. I'm not a rocket scientist. Stay in your lane, right? <laughs> if, if, if I want to write a piece of legislation about rocket <laughs> ships, I don't go, you know what? I think rocket ships are dangerous, and I think I know everything about rocket ships. And you know, uh, the Nazis use rocket ships to drop bombs on everybody. How ignorant would that make me sound, <laughs> right? Would, would, I, would I just be a slave to that ignorance and, and just put that ignorance out there? No, I would stay in my lane, and I would stay within the things that I know about, right? Okay, well, why not bring in someone that actually knows what they're talking about that can at least articulate your point mm -hmm. and try to make it... The reason they can't do that, the reason they can't articulate the point is because the facts don't back up their claims. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. A factual person comes to the table and goes, well, Mr. Levine, uh, 
you're full of crap. <laughs> This just isn't reality. Like, I know you want it to be reality. It's not one of those things if you close your eyes and go, all right, please, 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 and they open your eyes and it's still there. Like, well, it's not going to change, right? <clears throat> Nothing's going to change the facts. And that's the mm. scary thing about these people is mm -hmm. they always want it. That's, it's their facts. It's their version of the facts, not what the facts mm. actually are. Right? George Orwell warned us of this. Mm -mm. Right. When it came to thought, uh, you know, thought speak and changing the news and, and changing history by changing words and books mm -hmm. and articles and, mm -hmm. and all public these things. perception. Yes. Yeah. Changing public perception to the point that if you tell the same lie long enough and people believe it for long enough, they just accept it as the mm -hmm. truth. Burning books. Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. I book mean, burning. It's what it's literally the you so, know, result of. So Mark Levine got dealt a pretty heavy blow recently because his. Uh, assault weapons ban, a suppressor ban that he introduced, uh, it passed the House Committee, passed the House, okay, pretty much along party lines. There were some Democrats that actually uh, crossed over and voted against the bill. It still wasn't enough to stop it. Well, it got um, steamrolled in the Senate Committee, okay, 10 to 5 vote, and there were Democrats that crossed over party lines. Now, it didn't get completely defeated. I would have liked to have seen it just trashed, but it got pushed to the 2021 session, okay. They're hoping people upon, forget about it. Yeah, upon further study by like a crime research group or something along those lines. Uh, they which, don't care about the facts. Which they're going to find that, you know, assault weapons bans do nothing to thwart crime. They only infringe on everyday citizens' rights. That's right. Okay, so he got dealt a heavy blow, and you could see it in his face during that Senate committee. When they tallied the votes and they put it up there on that screen, he was dumbfounded. I, I don't think that he could even begin to understand what common people need. Nobody, and, uh, and that's the time. issue: is these people get into these positions in government, and they look at it as a power grab, and they look at it as a, a high and mighty, I'm me kind of thing. Hear me roar, and mm -hmm. and they just they want that power, and they want that that position, and they want to yep. climb that ladder, and that's all it is. They they feel like if that's what they fervently go for, that within the Democratic Party, that they're going to get that next notch in the belt. They're going to get that next rung on the ladder, and they're going to keep going up. And then if and when, or if, those people rise into, let's just say, nationwide power, and there's, there's all the state governments are controlled by Democrats, and of course it steamrolls everything into the presidency, let's just say that were to happen, mm -hmm. and then they get complete control, well then, oh, you helped get us there. I think they really are insane. Mm -hmm. that, that's just the bottom line. They, they are completely detached from reality, and that's yeah, look at that's Look at why legislators they like you know, Nancy Pelosi and such. I mean, they've been fighting for the same anti-gun bullcrap for years and years. I mean... It's the definition of insanity. Let's, let's keep repeating the same thing over and over again and think the outcome's going to change. I mean, they're just hoping that someday, someday it sticks, that the public perception of gun owners will change to the point uh, through media bias, through censorship, which goes on all the time, through uh, you know, the lack of education of, of young children and such with gun safety, gun rights, uh, learning about the Constitution, learning about the founding of the country. It's things that they are not teaching in a lot of places these days. Okay, oh, yeah. They're trying to rewrite history and indoctrinate young children to be anti-gun, anti-drugs. Like, oh, drugs are bad. Oh, guns are bad. You know, it's like the NRA, the Eddie Eagle thing sometimes, it makes me sick. Like, oh, if you see a gun, don't touch it. It's like, well, I mean, I want, How my, are you children, learn? I want my children to know about firearms. I teach my children about firearms. You know, but it's just ridiculous. I, it, it is, and and I've literally lost brain cells from making talking this, about video. this. Oh yeah, talking about it has made me lose brain cells. Ugh. So I'm gonna have to go home and read some Hamlet or something, <laughs> or you know, I may have to ingest at least about 50 haikus uh, to sort of get my brain cells back. So I'll probably Ugh. go do that here in a little bit. But uh, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. We wanted to talk about this because it just shows the clear hypocrisy that these folks are capable of. They clearly don't care about the facts. They clearly don't understand, and, and they just simply don't care. Well, they, and they don't care about you either. No. They don't care about the individual. No, not okay. at all. So uh, we wanted to make this video. So, guys, thanks for watching. We uh, definitely want to take a moment to thank all our Patreon supporters, those of you who purchased man cans, T-shirts over on Ballistic Inc. Y'all rock. Thank you so much for the support. All the funds we earn go right back into supporting the channel, so thank you for being a part of that. We'll see you next time. Many more on the way.